Well, hello and blessings to all. For those of you who haven't been with us, my name is Tim Gold, Minister of Education and Administration at First Baptist Pell City. Welcome to this week's online lesson. Today in the Explore the Bible curriculum, we're going to continue studying the book of Proverbs and the Song of Songs. Today we're going to be looking at and conclude Proverbs chapter 4. This week's lesson is entitled, The Choice. Well, some first thoughts initially about the lesson today. I think we all are aware and understand that life is filled with choices, maybe too many choices, but choices nonetheless. Hearing the truth demands a response as well, a choice to either embrace or reject truth. There's no neutrality when it comes to truth. Neutrality is a choice to reject the truth. Solomon's plea in Proverbs 4 to hear and obey and not turn away from the wisdom of God reminded God's people the choices that lay before them. To embrace God's wisdom provides a way through life. To reject God's wisdom is to ensure destruction. A couple of questions to consider as we start. Have you gotten confused over a choice because you had so many options? How did you make the choice ultimately? Think about that. Let's talk about the context for a few minutes in Proverbs 4. Solomon returned to the theme of valuing wisdom. Earlier, he urged his son to give attention to his instruction in chapter 1, verse 8, and chapter 3, verse 1. Now, once again, he challenged his son to listen carefully to godly instruction. Solomon's appeal underscored his compassion. He appealed to his son because he loved him and he wanted him to enjoy a satisfying and rewarding life. In Solomon's appeal, he reflected on his relationship with his own father, King David. He elaborated on his father's challenge to him when he was a young man. David had encouraged Solomon to choose wisdom. Speaking of wisdom was, was an elegant lady. David taught him to consider her to be a priceless treasure. David also assured Solomon that embracing wisdom would be worthwhile. Wisdom would protect him from foolishness and give him a life of respect and honor. You see this in chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. David's challenge to his son did not land on deaf ears. When Solomon became king of Israel after his father's death, he had an encounter with the Lord in a dream. In his encounter, he asked the Lord to help him live in wise obedience. God's answer, God answered his prayer by promising to give him the wisdom he would need to lead God's people well. You see this in 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 7 through 15. Now Solomon had a son of his own and wanted the young man to make wise choices. For that reason, he taught his son about the two paths. People who obeyed godly instruction took the path to satisfaction. People who rejected God's wisdom took the path of wickedness. The path of wickedness would lead to a gloomy outcome smothered in darkness. This is laid out in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 11 through 19. Although Solomon could point his son to the right path, he couldn't make the decision for him regarding which road to take. Same, same can be said today. However, he could encourage his son to guard his heart, the wellspring of life. A heart turned to godly wisdom would guide God's people so that they would discipline themselves to live out his purpose for them and not their own selfish reasons. You see that in, again, Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 27. Let's, let's get into the text of our lesson today. Verse 11 of chapter 4. I've taught you the way of wisdom. I've led you in the paths of uprightness. Well, when Solomon taught his son and other young men in the royal court about the importance of taking the path of wisdom, his instruction had a greater influence than he could have imagined. Solomon passed along the way of wisdom for God's people then and now. Of course, God is the one who inspired and guided the process of collecting and arranging the Proverbs. When we describe wisdom as seeing things God's way so we can do things His way, we can grasp the value of putting his instruction into practice. He gives us his wisdom and expects us to apply it to our own circumstances. As we put his wisdom to work, we see for ourselves that his wisdom makes sense. Trusting him to make us wise, we confidently rely on him to put us on the paths of uprightness. Well, from Solomon's perspective, life isn't a battle for a quest, a quandary, or a dilemma. Instead, life is a journey, and living well involves getting on the right path. Without God's wisdom to guide us, we run the risk of taking the wrong path, a crooked road that leads to destruction. Foolish people take that path, but wise believers seek God's guidance so they can choose the right path. 
the straight road that leads to a fulfilling life. Verse 12, when you walk, your step will not be hampered, and if you run, you will not stumble. Well, we, when we compare it to life to a journey, we naturally think about the steps we'll take as we travel. Living each day for the Lord means trusting to Him, turning to Him, rather, for wisdom to take the right steps. When we follow His guidance, we can depend on Him to make sure that we will not be hampered as we walk along the path of life. The path can be blocked by an assorted assortment of obstacles that might prevent someone from going forward. Foolish people run into them frequently as they choose the path of pride, power, pleasure, or greed. God's people, however, also can be hindered by those obstacles when we set out on a path without seeking His wisdom. However, believers who seek God's wisdom have the assurance that the Lord will show us the stumbling blocks that could hinder us on the journey. On our journey, our pace will change as we follow the path of God's wisdom. At times, we will walk. At other times, however, we will run. When we're running, the pace can be fast and furious. Of course, running increases the risk of stumbling. Imagine an athlete on a track, running as fast as possible toward a finish line. A hidden pitfall on the track will trip even the fastest runner. A careful eye can keep the athlete from tripping over the obstacle and taking a tumble. Similarly, godly instruction will prevent us from being tripped up by the circumstances in life. Verse 13, keep hold of instruction, do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. To keep from taking a fall on the journey of life, we do well to stay focused on God's wisdom. Instead of handling it with a loose grip, we're urged to keep hold of it with a firm grasp. It will be useless to us if we never take time to consider it, listen to it, and follow it. The Bible offers a wealth of godly wisdom and shows us how to be wise in Him. Too often, however, Bibles only gather dust as they sit idly on tables, nightstands, and shelves. The treasure of Scripture makes a difference to us when we place it in our hearts. That's how we hold on to godly instruction. The need to guard godly wisdom cannot be overstated. Guarding it implies keeping it close to us so, we won't be taken, so it won't be taken from us. The predator that seeks to rob God's wisdom from us is not a person who takes away our Bibles. Instead, the thief could be our own preoccupation with lesser things or the mistaken notion that we can get by with neglecting the study of God's Word. Standing firm in our determination to follow godly instruction stems from our certainty that His wisdom is what leads to life. Question to consider at this time. In what ways do you demonstrate that you have taken hold of godly instruction and make it a priority? Good question. Well, verses 14 and 15. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. Well, in stark contrast to the road that leads to life, Solomon warned his son to not enter the path of the wicked. He sounded a clear warning alarm to anyone who would be tempted to follow in the way of evil. Like a police officer who stands in the middle of a busy street and holds up a stop sign for everyone to see and obey, Solomon's words of warning bring to us a sudden halt. His warning not to walk implies that we should not take a single step toward the path of the wicked. Likewise, telling us to avoid the path gives us an unmistakable directive about refusing to even come near it. The order to turn away from it leaves us with no doubt that, that we're wise when we take a detour around it and go in another, in another direction altogether. By intentionally steering clear of the path, wicked people follow. We reduce the risk of being lured into a lifestyle we'll eventually regret. regret. At first glance, the path taken by foolish people who have rejected godly wisdom may appear to be harmless. In fact, it might even look like fun. That's when we start telling ourselves that we might enjoy taking a few steps on that road. We might even be deceived into believing that we can take only a few steps and then exit the path whenever we want. Verses 16 and 17. For they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. 
they are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. If we take the road of the wicked and follow the example of evil people, we'll eventually find ourselves trapped on the path and unable to exit it. The foolish people who take that path can be driven to act in ways that bring harm to others. Solomon's warning drives home the harsh reality that wickedness can consume a person. It can keep him or her awake at night. Evil people lie in bed with nothing on their minds except how they can hurt somebody. They won't be able to sleep until they've brought despair, grief, and sorrow to the doorstep of some unsuspecting victim. Causing an innocent individual to stumble and fall brings a wicked kind of satisfaction that allows them to be at, at peace when they go to bed each night. That is the approach of the wicked. Solon added that the evil path would have another effect on those who follow it. Eating bread and drinking wine convey the idea of having a meal. Using this idea, Solomon shed light on how people behave when they follow the path of wickedness. They indulge at a lavish banquet that evil sets before them. At that table, they gorge themselves with tasty dishes made with wickedness and violence. They keep on consuming them and never get tired of them. In fact, they want more. Their hunger for, their op for the opportunity opportunity to do something wrong drives them to, for, to fill their lives with violent behavior. Earlier, Solomon warned his son to stay away from violent people. You see this in chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. Their need for violence leads them to indulge in criminal behavior. Their passion for violence eventually removes all restraints. With nothing to hold them back, they throw themselves into a lifestyle of cruelty and crime. And you see that certainly today in our culture and society. Verses 18 and 19. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. Well, the contrast Solomon provided reveals distinct differences between the path taken by the righteous and the way chosen by the wicked. It also paints a clear picture of the two distinct outcomes. People who give themselves to the Lord and follow his instruction can count on a bright future. Solomon described their future with the phrase, the light of dawn. He had in mind the morning sunshine that announces the arrival of a new day. The longer the sun shines in the sky, the brighter it becomes. By midday, the sunshine is the brightest. With this word picture, Solomon implies that the future of a believer who embraces godly instruction looks bright. At time, as time moves on, the path becomes even brighter and clearer for those who follow God's instruction. The outcome of the wicked will be anything but bright. Solomon described the future of, a wicked, of wicked people as deep darkness. Darkness covers their way so they cannot see what lies ahead of them. Furthermore, the darkness promises to become more intense the longer they follow the way of evil. Eventually, they will stumble in the darkness, but the gloom will prevent them from seeing what they tripped on. They will not understand how they fell. Questions to consider at this time. When you found yourself tempted to take the way of the wicked, when, when have you found yourself to tempted to take the way of the wicked. If you avoided it, who helped you to do that? Two questions to consider. Well, verses 20 through 23. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Well, once again, Solomon urged his son to be attentive to godly instruction. He didn't want him to allow these sayings to go in one ear and out the other. Taking them seriously would require discipline, and the benefit would be worth every bit of the effort. Solomon's instruction needed to be kept close at hand. If his son allowed them to get out of his sight by neglecting them, he would run the risk of losing them. 
to hold on to them, he needed to place them securely in his heart. The people in Solomon's day thought of the heart as the center of life itself. Therefore, wisdom placed inside a person's heart would supply him or her with a satisfying life. It could even make a positive difference in a person's physical health. Because the heart matters so much, taking Solomon's instructions seriously would be wise. If we give attention to making our physical health, our finances, or our calendars our highest priority, we're making a mistake. Life doesn't flow from these kinds of priorities. Instead, life springs forth from a person's heart. For that reason, godly wisdom calls on believers to keep their hearts with all vigilance. Our hearts serve as the physical, emotional, and spiritual source of our lives. What we put in our hearts will make a difference in how we live. Therefore, we're wise when we discipline ourselves to watch over and guard our hearts. We guard our hearts by being wise about what we allow to be placed there. If we let our hearts be filled with senseless thoughts, we will pay a price in senseless actions. But if we allow God's wisdom to be stored in our hearts, we will reap the reward of a life lived wisely. Verses 24 and 25. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Well, Solomon knew that what's placed in a person's heart would show up in what he or she said. That's why he counseled his son to be disciplined regarding what came out of his mouth. The words that came through his lips would reveal what had been placed in his heart. God's people who nourish his wisdom in, in their hearts will not be given to dishonest talk. We will not let lies flow through our lips. Instead, we will only be interested in telling the truth. The honesty of our words reflects the purity of our hearts. Also, we will not use our words deviously. We will not twist our words in, a, in an attempt to be misleading. We must understand that controlling our words starts with examining our hearts. Along with controlling our words, we're challenged to be wise about what we do with our eyes. The call to look directly forward urges us to move forward with a sense of purpose. From an awareness of God's purpose of our lives, we're able to make wise choices about how we spend our days. God's wisdom sets us on the path that takes us in the right direction, allowing us to do what he considers to be right. A life of purpose can be sidetracked by a multitude of distractions. That is why we are encouraged to keep our eyes fixed on the path ahead of us. We will be distracted from God's purpose for our lives if we fail to fix our gaze straight before us. However, when we keep our eyes on him and his purpose for us, we're able to move ahead in a way that pleases him and brings fulfillment to us. Verses 26 to 27. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Well, when we think of life as a journey, we must consider the steps that we take with our feet. The path on which the Lord has placed us requires us to manage our steps carefully. If we follow godly instruction, we will be eager to discipline, discipline ourselves so our feet will step on solid ground. Therefore, we consistently pay close attention to the steps we take each day. We ponder where we place our feet because we want our steps to be correct. In other words, we make certain that we plan properly. We refuse to be sidetracked by turning to the right or to the left. Neither will we allow ourselves to get off track by the foolish path of evil. We plan our lives in keeping with his purpose. Questions consider as we close. How disciplined have you been in your journey of living out God's purpose for your life? What changes do you need to make if you're not doing this? Good to consider. Well, the key doctrine, the lesson most to learn today is basically Scripture. The Holy Bible is a perfect treasure of divine instruction. This is seen in Psalms 19, verses 7 through 10. And this is our 
our guidance and our instruction for life to stay on the path God has for us. As we progress through the study in Proverbs, I pray you're continuing to meet the challenges that we offer to you several weeks back. For the next three months, read at least a chapter a day in the Proverbs and repeat it each month. See what God, do God does in your life. And I pray you're doing that, and I encourage you to stay consistent in this reading. In times like we currently live, we need as much wisdom from God as we can get right now. Well, please join us next week as we continue to look at chapter 5 of Proverbs in this summer study. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Father, again, thank you for this opportunity you've given us. I pray that we would take seriously the instruction you've laid out for us here in Proverbs through Solomon to follow the path of righteousness, God, that you laid before us and to seek your love and your counsel and your wisdom and your word and not to go after or follow the path of the evil or the wicked. I pray your, your word will be on our hearts, on our lips, and on our mind constantly. These things I ask in your name. Amen. Good to be with you this week. Look forward to seeing you next week as we look at Chapter 5 of Proverbs. God bless you.